Hey guys, Rich here. Subscribers know that camping and cooking is what I'm about, and it's getting to be winter in the Midwest, so it's time to head out and do a shakedown on some new gear. Santa brought me a new belt tent and a new wood stove to go in it, so we're going to pack up the mall and head out for the weekend to try this stuff out and make some nachos. So believe it or not, even with all this here, we're still 50 pounds under gross, so volume is going to be a bigger consideration than weights this time. The mall is a pretty capable plane with two big doors to make it easy to get cargo in and out. We're taking advantage of that today with a bunch of gear that's pretty bulky but not all that heavy. The only things we have today with any real density are the tent and the stove, so we have plenty of room for enough fuel to go non-stop. Regional Airport. Automated weather observation. One, six, five, eight, Zulu, weather, wind, zero. Okay, we got everything in the back that we need. Time to head to Ohio. Below. Chopper traffic, Medivac 235, Delta Hotel, five miles to the south, 1,500, transitioning northbound. Chopper. Chopper traffic, uh, Orange Mall departing runway 11. Departing the pattern to the south uh, east. I'll be looking for the traffic. Yeah, Shumber traffic, orange ball departing the pattern to the south. I've got the inbound, uh, looks like a helicopter in sight. Shumber. Shumber traffic, uh, yes sir, that's better back 235. I got you, size well, sir. So it's Shummer behind us, out here to the left, midway, up and to the left. And that's pretty much it. Most of the other interesting stuff is to the right. We're in a 1,900 foot shelf right now. So I've got to be careful not to bust that. Shummer, traffic on 3-5 kilo tank. And have a traffic check, 546 lean rise, approximately 5 miles to the southwest. Uh, we're also in boundary one zero. We'll cross over midfield. Five one actually. Okay, enough of that. Okay, so we've got a couple challenges today. Challenge number one is the tug. Will it fit space wise? It'll fit weight wise. I did the calculations for the return trip with a full load of fuel. It'll be 50 pounds under. But will it fit space wise? Is the question. Challenge number two supposed to be kind of a rainy, ugly night, so I didn't have a chance to do a test run with the new tent. So will I be able to stay warm and comfortable and make my nachos in the tent, or will I be cold and wet and miserable? And look at that, I used to work there. Sargon National Lab. That ring does really cool stuff. The laser. The laser that uh, you don't want to have in your house. The laser that's used to do material studies to figure out kind of how crystals form and what the crystalline structure of different materials is. Each one of those uh, triangles, each one of those pointy things is a experimental station where you can set up your, your gear and your samples and get laser time. Yeah, cool. I didn't realize it was me flying over there today. So that's something that everybody from Chicago is going to recognize. That's a Thornton Quarry. Been there for almost 100 years. I think it was built in the 20s. Now it's not used as a quarry. It's used as part of the Chicago Deep Tunnel Project to control flooding in the area. So being part of the Deep Tunnel, the, the question is how much is the holding capacity? Apparently the, the holding capacity of this thing is like 8 billion gallons of water or something ridiculous like that, which is necessary because it's supposed to offset about $40 million in damages from flooding each year. Okay, here we are over northern Indiana and I'm already getting hungry. It is one o'clock in the afternoon. I'm looking forward to those nachos later. We're just doing this simple thing. We're, we're gonna make uh, a fire in the wood stove and then using that fire, we're gonna cook some chicken breasts and then take those chicken breasts and put them onto some simple nachos. I think it's gonna be pretty darn tasty. Cleveland Approach Mall 222 Tango Foxtrot, 25 miles west. Uh, we'll be overflying uh, the Charlie at 5,500. Request flight following to Columbiana.
222 Tango Foxtrot, Cleveland Approach, squad 4633. 4633, 222 Tango Foxtrot. All 2 Tango Foxtrot, radar contact, 2.5 southwest, the, uh, I'm sorry, the Waldorf Airport, 5500. Akron Altimeter, 3020. 3020, 222 Tango Foxtrot. So you're going to zero two golf. Hey, primitive two tank attack shot. So it's not too cold right here. It's uh, outside air temperature of about freezing. And uh, inside it's, I don't know, probably about 45 or so. Weather is looking good. We've got an overcast layer that's about 12,000 feet up, so that's not going to cause any problems. Very little wind. But we've got some weather to the southwest that's coming through tonight. And we'll see how the camping goes with that coming through. Okay, time to switch the fuel tanks to both. We're pretty even. We're, we've got a little more fuel in the right tank, which is what I want. Seven number two, Tango Foster, no traffic there between you and the uh, Columbia County Airport. Clock South Center, radar service terminated. Please change approved today. Okay, hey, close, squawking VFR, thanks for the help, 222 Tango Foxtrot. Columbia on airport, small two Tango Foxtrot, five miles west, inbound landing 07, Columbia. If I can find it. Now we've got a bunch of trees, and even a few more hills. So I haven't found it yet. Four miles to go. Columbia on a traffic, multi Tango Foxtrot entering left downwind runway 07, Columbia. Nobody on the ADSB, which isn't required here, but we are between a Charlie and a Bravo. So I would expect most people in the area do have it, even if it's not required for this particular airport. Okay, super high. Pulling the gas out, put the second flaps in already. And Columbiana traffic, mall two tank of Fox Trot train left base runway 07, Columbiana. Just because of the altitude, we're going to end up turning about a two mile final here. And we've got three flaps in, and we're slow, we're going uh, 51 miles an hour, airspeed. And Columbiana traffic, mall two tank of Fox Trot. Train final runway 07, Columbiana. So far, nice and smooth. This airport doesn't have weather, but the ones in the area were reporting no winds or very light winds. I don't expect anything interesting as we get closer to the ground, especially with no sun coming through. Still quite high, which in a normal plane with a better glide ratio probably be a little too high, but with the mall, since it wants to fall like a rock, this is a pretty good position to be in. The person with the tug would be here at 3. It is 7 till 3. I'm going to call that victory. Well, I hope they have gas. Looks kind of dug up. We'll see. Okay, change of plans. I was going to get gas there, but the uh, pump doesn't seem to have been hooked up yet. So we're going to go. So we're going to go somewhere else that is supposed to have pie. Well, let's get some pie. Coming up on Greg's farm now. We have 33 miles to go, and once we get there, it's going to be right at sunset. So we're going to have to get unpacked, get the tent started, get all that stuff before it gets too dark. Since I've never set this tent up before, it could be kind of a challenge.
Okay, so here we are back at the Swingle Farm in Philo, Ohio. Uh, just love being here, love hanging out with Greg. Good to be back. Good to go through this tent for the first time and do, use this as a shakedown. So we've got the tent unpacked, so what we're gonna do now is pin down the bottoms and we can put a pole in the center and I think from there we put some guy lines out. So we'll see how things pan out. This is the first time doing this, so you know as well as I do what's going on. Hopefully we can get it to work. cut a circle though we're gonna cut a an axe and ellipse oh yeah so like mark mark the four end points of two lines okay if that makes sense yeah so i guess so we're doing an x until it fits huh? yeah that's it okay yep you're doing exactly right just okay. little, little by little okay. until it fits so that we don't have to send it back to have a new <laughs> a new stove jack put into it yeah <laughs> Probably hard to find some fire. Alright, so, well, one piece I know I need on the outside done. Yeah. Is. So, let's see, is that uh, male or female on that? That's what I was just going to check. Because I did that wrong when I was fooling around with it at home. Okay. Wide on the top. Wide on the top. Okay, you're, you're ready to go. Let me get one more in here. Yeah. That's good. I got the odd like one on so you can push through. Okay. Time to make our dinner. Tonight we're going to try and make nachos. First we're heating up the pan and adding a bit of oil to cook the chicken. All I did was roughly chop a chicken breast, no need for precision on this one. We're going to season the chicken just a little bit, simple stuff tonight. Salt, pepper, garlic powder. Oil is nice and hot and the chicken is cooking pretty well. There's some controversy about the origin of nachos. Some will tell you that they're not even Mexican. They were invented as a special at a club in Mexico in Piedras Negras, which is right across the border from Eagle Pass, Texas. A regular customer was interested in trying something different, so the cook, whose nickname was Nacho, fried up some tortillas, put some cheese and jalapenos on, and named the dish after himself. I'm planning to put the pan under the stove as a kind of ad hoc broiler, but the bottom of the stove isn't getting as hot as I expected, so we're going to have to see how all this pans out. 
I'm going to try putting the cutting board under to really snug the pan up to the stove. Chicken comes out and since it's a camping channel and we don't carry a full kitchen, we're going to put it on the onions for the moment. There are about a million different chips to choose from these days. Since we aren't making our own, we're using a very traditional thick chip that will stand up well to the cheese and toppings without getting soggy and droopy. And since we're not in a warm kitchen, we're going to heat up the chips a bit before topping them. No need to drain the oil, the chips will soak that up as they warm up. Once the chips are warm, we can start putting the toppings on. We're going to do the cheese in two layers. First, we're gonna put on a light layer of cheese. Then we add the chicken we set aside a bit ago. Finally, another layer of cheese. The pan we brought this time is just a little too big to fit between the legs of the stove. I guess this is why we're doing a test run. No problem though, we grab a work glove to use as a hot pad, pick the stove up, and nestle the pan underneath to melt the cheese. Since we did manage to get things hot enough to melt the cheese, we're ready to add the final toppings. Today we're doing onions, and tomatoes, Finally, we move to the table and add sour cream and salsa. The proof of the pudding is in the tasting, and these were pretty good for a test run. Chips stayed nice and crisp. The toppings were a tasty combination. One thing I forgot was to dice up a serrano pepper that I had to add some heat, but otherwise I'm declaring success. So feed the algorithm by clicking like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.